Stanford University. Yes, among the profession, uh, even among lay readers, we have a following. Uh, but uh, uh, anecdotally, it seems like we've had a big impact in the profession. And if you type syllabus Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy into Google, you will see, you know, possibly syllabi numbering in the thousands that cite Stanford Encyclopedia articles as have them uh, assign them to students as part of the course reading. So. It, it, and it's not just limited to philosophy. I mean, the reason our, we come up so highly ranked in a Google search on a term that might be the subject of an encyclopedia article is not just because philosophers are creating websites linking to us. It's because people in many different professions uh, of other non-academic pursuits are finding our articles interesting. The one thing that often we don't have when we interact with a computer, which is the feeling of confidence that what you're being told has been vetted, it's by experts, and you can rely on it. You don't need to tell your students not to cite the, the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy in their, in their papers, and, and indeed it's extraordinarily widely used uh, in classes. We want an undergraduate or a graduate student or colleague to be able to sit down, read the article carefully, thoughtfully, and not have to go off and be distracted by learning terms that they don't have. That, that, that they don't understand. Everything is explained that they need to know in order to complete the entry. So, so it's free, it, it's infinitely expandable, and it's continuously revisable. So for the first time, instead of having a reference work that's out of date when it's published already, because research has moved on, you have a reference work that's re responsive to research. It's an amazing uh, uh, project. It's 600 to 700,000 hits a week, uh, which, uh, you know, that's quite a few. <laughs>